Hi, this is Solim Bhartia and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us Haseeb Budhani, co-founder and CEO of Refe Systems. Haseeb, it's great to have you on the show. Nice to talk to you, Sokal. Thank you for having me. Since it's your debut appearance on TFR, tell us a bit about the company and since you are a co-founder, so let's also try to get the story of why you co-founded the company. So Rafe is in the Kubernetes management space. Uh, there is a whole industry forming around helping enterprises manage their Kubernetes deployments. Uh, this market started many years ago now, uh, even before arguably Kubernetes, when people were just focused on container orchestration. But now that every large enterprise is uh, you know, modernizing their applications, there's more and more need to standardize and you know, consume the management layer as, as a package solution, as a service, uh, which is what we do here. Uh, that's uh, you know, kind of you know, made the last one and a half year or so since we've been selling the product a very successful time for us as a small company. Um, and you know, particularly because of our background, particularly because of where we came from, the pains we left felt in our prior startup which was acquired by Akamai, you know, it, this project that we're working on, it's very near and dear to us because, you know, the, the product we sell to our customers today, five years ago, we would have loved to buy this, but nobody sold it in our previous company. In fact, that experience of having built a pretty large uh, modern application that ran across many, many locations on the internet, that was the kind of the the, the, you know, the, the kick, if you will, that got us thinking about the problem in the first place. And here we are with arguably the most, uh, you know, easy to consume product in the market. So let's talk about the importance of managed services in a world where everybody has to have a cloud uh, or, or digital transformation strategy and they have to also move faster. I think fast is the word to focus on here because um, look, why are we doing this? all of this in the first place? Because we want to deliver applications, capabilities to our customers faster. And what's happening in every company is, well, look, everybody starts small, right? I got a simple app. Hey, this, this orchestration thing seems easy. I got this, don't worry about it. And then one month becomes two months, becomes four months, becomes six months, and then one person team becomes four or five, 10 people. This is, this is everybody's seen this movie in every enterprise out there. There's no other alternative. And the reason why this happens is day one, when we start working on these modernization projects, uh, we don't know what we don't know. And in many conversations I have with enterprise leaders, you know, I hear this a lot. Hey, look, we already have a team working on this. It's going well, you know, it's all good, right? And then we say, okay, all right. So, hey, so how have you thought about, I'll pick an example, right? So how have you thought, what is your solution for secrets management across your clusters? How do you make sure, you know, secrets, you know, certificates or passwords, et cetera, are securely being deployed into clusters and they're not sitting on a disk, for example. And they go, yeah, that's a, that's an, actually, that, you're right, that's a problem. We haven't gone to it, we'll get to it. Okay, all right, so you got all these environments, you got Amazon, you got a data center. So how do you do just, you know, how do you know who's accessing what? And how do you audit this stuff? Because you're running production applications. Now. Yep, absolutely. That's a great problem. We will get to it. The problem is they, they have a sense for what needs to happen. This is a very long list. And the reality is, look, I mean, this is going to take you years to figure out if you're doing this yourself. And um, even if you, you know, even with the right people, every company has some very smart people, but there's so much to do. Like there's no company with with uh, you know with people who's doing, sitting there doing nothing. Everybody's got so many things going on, and this is yet another thing we're piling on our DevOps team. All DevOps teams are very busy, and now yet another thing comes along. And look, I mean, these guys are obviously very sharp. They understand what they're doing. They can learn very fast. But hey, if there's a way for them to move even faster with assistance from a tool set like ours. Right or or anything. I mean, this applies not just to Kubernetes management. This applies across the board. This could this could apply to you know shift left security. This could apply to automation for operations in the cloud. At every point, there are now capabilities available as a service that DevOps teams can consume and deliver to their internal customer faster. And we have to think about that for a minute, right? The customer for DevOps is operations, the guys who run it or gals who run it on a daily basis, and then developers. We need to make sure they are in a position where they can move a lot faster. And to me, Nirvana here is developers, frankly, they don't need to know what Kubernetes is. Who cares? That's the infrastructure layer. It should be invisible to them. Not just, I don't care. I write my code, I check it in, it just works. Make everything happen for me. That's, that's the right answer. So you asked, and I, I said all these things because you asked the question, hey, how did they learn? I'm positing that developers should really focus on their apps. Everything else should be hidden from them. That's 
absolutely the right answer. I think that's where the market is clearly going. And uh, managed platforms like ours are accelerating their path for enterprises. As you're talking about uh, these uh, teams that the challenges, we, of course, shift left is happening. Uh, then also you have to also look at GitOps so that you are doing a lot of things, you know, at the core level. And then we are also talking about uh, the reliability of your stack. Uh, SREs, you know, are there too. So uh, as uh, another set of movement is going on within the industry and the companies have to keep up with all of those. So once again, uh, let's go back and talk about the role of managed services from this changing perspective as well. Once again, the focus, as you said rightly, is on uh, developers uh, should uh, focus on that. But the thing is, their rules are also changing. Yeah, absolutely. So GitOps is obviously clearly very important. And um, you know, as, a, as, a, as capabilities in a platform, we natively provide GitOps capabilities to deploy infrastructure. So if you're deploying, let's say, EKS in Amazon, you can, you know, you, you, there's a cluster spec, you can park that in Git. You can have triggers show up on Rafe, and that'll trigger Rafe to go deploy clusters for you. And on top of that, for the application itself, as developers write code and check it in, there's already capabilities in Rafe so that such that uh, you know when you check in code and let's say a build is ready, a webhook will be called back to Rafe, and that triggers Rafe to go grab a new container and deploy it to your cluster. Everything GitOps is naturally. Uh, where the world is going because it just enables, again, going back to the word fast, it enables us to move a lot faster. I can build infrastructure faster, I can deploy applications faster. But you also said SRE, right? So there are people in an organization who need to know what is happening here, right? Where are my clusters? What's running where? Are the right people accessing the right infrastructure? Can I easily upgrade everything as and when I need to? If a new version of, I don't know, Twistlock shows up and I got 20 clusters, can I easily press a button and deploy it across all these locations? This is where day-to-day -day operations happens, right? And these are not things. If you're day, day zero, I know people kind of, you know, in theory, people think about these things, but till you're there, you know, till you're in the midst of it, you just don't know how hard it is for the SREs in an organization. And in fact, right now, their life is really difficult because tooling doesn't exist for them to actually do their job, which is keeping things up and running, right? So in addition to a product, you know, this is to me is kind of a key component of a, of a managed service is yes, we sell a SaaS product. It's very easy to use. It's very secure. It solves all the problems we've talked about, you know, GitOps and, you know, access security, zero trust connectivity, all these things it does. But in addition to that, what we've also found is really key is it is a new market. Our customers are always learning. So then how do we help them learn faster? So one of the key kind of muscles we've invested in here is we have a 24 seven team that a call them, call them, email them, Slack them. Nobody calls, no, nobody calls anymore. Everything is Slack, but people reach out and they say, hey, I deployed an app, it didn't work. I don't know, what do I do? So pre previously they would go Google the stuff or look at a community website somewhere or something or look at a community Slack channel, no, no. We are here, this is our job now. We are essentially part of your team. Treat us as, as an extension of your organization. So you buy our solution, but then we are also effectively part of your SRE organization. I think that combination is really powerful. And in my opinion, we are winning business from our competitors because of this. Our product is great. Our team has done an incredibly good job. I mean, I'm very, very happy with the output that this team has produced in terms of just a super easy to consume, very secure SaaS platform for Kubernetes management. But this solutions uh, architecture team that we've built here between the US and Australia and, and India, this, in my opinion, is hands down uh, a reason why over time customers will continue to stay with us because absolutely they see us as an extension of their SRE organization. Have you seen any specific pattern or any specific, you know, uh, challenges? Of course, there are so many because now Kubernetes is going into production and you know, a lot of companies are m moving away from evolution phase. Uh, so talk about uh, some of the challenges that you see your customers used to face and that's why you created the company. And then, then after that, I'll ask a follow-up questions uh, to, to kind of share your playbook to help those business leaders. So start with the challenges. I have a I have a slide in my kind of tradition, kind of typical kind of first meeting deck, which is a very simple table. And it's got like 11 rows and the first row says build a cluster. And then the second row says deploy an app and the third row says manage your secrets. Fourth row says, you know, act, manage access, blah, 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 right? More often than not, and the point of this slide is more often than not, 
when I talk to a leader in an enterprise, when they think about Kubernetes management, they think about the first row. Okay, I'm gonna build a cluster, done. No, you, it just started. You have to solve the ecosystem problem with Kubernetes. And I think that's the challenge that we don't learn that. I mean, this is an early market, right? We're all learning together, frankly, right? We're learning, our competitors are learning, and our, part, our customers are learning. Most people think, well, I built an EKS cluster, I'm done now, right? No. Management is an entirely different problem. And one of the things that I you know, uh, proselytize is that there is a difference between Kubernetes and Kubernetes management. Kubernetes is a cluster, right? There's a bunch of these. Then how does this Kubernetes, bunch of these clusters fit into your enterprise? Okay, you've been using Splunk for 10 years. You've been using Twistlock for a bunch of years, et cetera. You use Okta for authentication. Now you're gonna be in Azure and AWS. How does all this stuff plug in together? That's where the pain is in my opinion. People spend a lot of time just integrating stuff once Kubernetes is built. And in, in my opinion, if we can solve that problem, which means people are going to production faster, we're gonna win business. So we spend more time thinking about making all of these components turnkey as they come together. Uh, that's where, in my opinion, if we can nail that, we have a great story. So I, I mentioned secret management before, you know, we see customers using HashiCorp Vault more than anything else in the market right now. Uh, okay, so how do you get HashiCorp Vault working across all your clusters? And then how do you make it easy for developers to, you know, leverage a reference to a secret in a, in a vault somewhere? We have made that so easy. I mean, our documentation is open. If somebody goes to docs.rafi.co and just search for secrets management, you'll see how easy we made it. But that's one example. But that effectively becomes a killer app. Right, that integration is a killer app because now there are multiple companies out there who have Kubernetes clusters and they're struggling with solving for the secrets problem. I keep talking about that, by the way, because just today, what is now, like it's like 10, a little past 10 a.m. Pacific, I've had three meetings this morning where the topic today was just secrets management. Right, we go into these meetings and just this, this is the killer app. The other one I would say is zero trust connectivity. There's a few months, a number of other things we do, but I think this bringing the ecosystem to bear for the customer in one fell swoop is, in my opinion, the, 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 I guess the insight we had as a team, solve that. Don't just give people Kubernetes clusters and tell them, hey, go read that blog and go figure that out and read that blog and go figure it. No, no, no. Package it together nicely so they can consume it easily. That, to me, is the differentiation. And that's, in my opinion, is why we're going to win this market. Yeah, I, I think the one place where, you know, I, all, I am also learning and, uh, you know, Swapnil has, you know, I mean, you talk to so many leaders in the space, you know, one thing that I think is worth thinking about for all of us is, you know, that I, I said this earlier, we, we don't know what we don't know. Our customers don't know what they don't know. And then they learn by doing, right? They try, you know, you stumble a little bit and you learn and you're going to, I hope uh, as, a, as a group, as an industry, we can come together and uh, you know, really help our collective customer base, right? Uh, really understand and appreciate um, what is hard and what is not hard, right? I think sometimes as, as, a, as a group, we try and oversimplify things, actually almost to the point of reductiveness. Hey, this, it's Kubernetes, it's so easy, build it on a cluster and uh, you know, oh, I can get this up on my laptop, it's so easy. Firstly, you know, it's misleading, right? I mean, yeah, look, it's not easy. It's okay. It's okay for it to be not easy. It actually solves a real problem. So, right. So, you know, once you understand that, okay, it's not easy. I need to solve it. I need to step back and think about what it means to me as an enterprise to consume this, you know, pretty new thing. I think that's going to help people really make better decisions, right? Because the one thing I'm seeing out there is so many companies saying, hey, you know, uh, I got this with open source. And then a year later, nothing has been done. And then they go out to the market and buy something. But they lost a year now, right? That's a shame, right? And I think many of our, you know, many of us can actually address that easily. We should be talking about this, right? It's okay, right? We don't need to say, no, no, we don't need to be afraid of saying it's 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 actually not that easy, it's hard, right? So when I talk to leaders, that's what I'm kind of reminding them because they know this already. It, it, yep, it's hard, but there are solutions, it's okay, right? And to me, that is a challenge. I mean, I, I bring that up, you know, uh, this is not a technology challenge, but to me, this is a, this is a kind of a, maybe a mentality challenge, right? I mean, of course, we, you know, this does, just because this is hard doesn't mean we don't know what we're doing. It's just like this is a very evolving market. It's taking its time. It's okay. But there are multiple vendors. Rafa is a, is a great one. Please do talk to us. But there are multiple ones, right? We're not the only ones. The reason why we all exist is, yeah, we can help you solve these problems. And the ROI is significantly lower relative to, you know, maybe kind of trying these things out yourself. So that's one place where Sopnil, you know, I would also encourage you to, as you talk to other other people, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the community, you know, just 
push on that, please, a little bit. No, that's a very uh, valid and excellent point, uh, and thanks for sharing that. Uh, since uh, you did mention it in the beginning, and I do want to go there as well, can you talk about uh, your solutions? You know, what do they look like, and uh, and and uh, is there any open source angle to what you're doing uh, beyond just leveraging and using open source technologies? Yeah. So, so first and foremost, we're, we're selling a SaaS product. And we call it uh, SaaS first because some of our more sensitive customers would prefer to have everything running in an air gap fashion. So the nice thing about our platform is it's also a Kubernetes platform. So our application is a massive Kubernetes application. It's a bunch of it's a containerized application, packages a bunch of Helm charts. It actually runs by default in Amazon EKS. So we know EKS really, really well because we use it on a daily basis at scale, like some pretty serious scale. Uh, so, but we sell it as a SaaS product. Uh, many of the capabilities we built here, um, and they're specifically around the zero trust concept we built. We built this zero trust fabric model where all interaction between the SaaS product and all the clusters across all of our customers, it's in a zero trust fashion. There's nothing reaching into your environment. We don't need VPC peering, all these kind of traditional old school things. You don't need that anymore because look, in the security world, there's already been you know great innovation around zero trust, right? So we applied those concepts to our platform. And to me, architecturally, that is one key reason why Rafe is going to win. Because now we can scale, we can have multi-tenancy at scale, we can have multiple customers on the same platform. Each customer can have their own internal views, each view can have their own internal clusters, on and on and on. All of this is possible because the perimeter is now the identity. So you know that space really well, right? So you know what's happening on the security side. We brought some of those concepts here. Fundamentally, that's a key distinction between Rafe and everybody else in the market. In fact, it makes our conversations with the enterprise security team much easier because when we say zero trust, they say, okay, all right, good. All right, that's already, your, we're on the same page, right? We're already buddies. Um, but these kinds of innovations we built in the product that allows us to compete effectively with our competitors. But look, we have customers, the, the scale of like a Verizon and a number of other logos that are on our website, uh, you know, MoneyGram and, uh, and others who are on, uh, we have logo, those kind of customers on the platform, th those logos are on our website. You know, there's a broad spectrum of customers, telco side, financial services, healthcare, high end, like, you know, high tech, uh, you know, startups, big startups. So it seems to be a horizontal problem. Everybody's doing Kubernetes now. And uh, the SaaS consumption model has definitely made it easier for our customers to get going. You don't need to install something. You don't need to now do, take care of care and feeding for this thing that now you own now, right? And that's people forget, right? You, okay, I, I downloaded and installed it. For one cluster, maybe it's okay, but now I got scale. I got to take care of this thing now also, right? Which is why many of our competitors are, are now doing hosted offerings with VPC peering. We all know now, this is a 10 year old lesson for all of us, hosters is not SaaS. SaaS is the right answer. Our entire data centers in Amazon are SaaS basically, right? Why would I buy software for this? Why would I do hosting for this? I should do SaaS. So this too, I mean, this is hands down the one key reason why uh, companies are engaging with us. Haseeb, thank you so much for taking time out and uh, talk today, not only about the, the company, first of all, thanks for joining us on the show. We know more about the company, but also the, the broader topic uh, about not only cloud native, but Kubernetes, which is of course about scale, but and more importantly is about security and how to make it easier for people. Open source so solves day one problem, anybody can download, but day two is where the real challenge is. And this technology is so complicated that you do need a managed services. So thanks for sharing that and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. So I really enjoyed this conversation. Looking forward to speaking again soon.